So we're carrying on with a story which we started earlier called Little Red Riding Hood. And just at the edge of the forest, a very crafty fellow was waiting. It was a wolf. When Little Red Riding Hood passed by, he greeted her with a slow smile. Good morning, my dear, he said. And what a fine morning it is. Little Red Riding Hood had never met a wolf before, so she wasn't scared. Good morning, she said politely, but I'm afraid I can't stop and talk. No matter, my dear, said the wolf. I shall walk along with you. Where are you off to on this fine morning? I'm going to see my grandmother, replied Little Red Riding Hood. Then I think I can be of service, said the wolf. I'll show you where there are some lovely flowers, my dear. You can take her a bouquet. Little Red Riding Hood knew that she shouldn't stop. But she did like the idea of taking her grandmother a special present. So she followed the wolf. Should she follow the wolf? Yes. No. Uh. She should do what her mother said. Don't stop on the way. Go straight to her grandmother. Don't go with the wolf. You never know what he's going to be up to. And same if you meet a strange man. Don't go with a strange man. Even if he tells you all sorts of things. You go and tell your friends. Go and tell the teachers. Go and tell somebody that, what, that man wants but to go with you. If you go with that, if you go with man, you don't know what will happen. You don't know. Uh, Bad things, probably. So that's why I'm saying, you. tell somebody else. Anybody. Tell anybody. Even other people in the street. Doesn't matter. Then we'll see. Then then you'll see. But don't don't just, don't just go with a strange man who you don't know, ever. Or a wolf. Uh, why? Little Red Riding Hood knew she shouldn't stop. But she did like the idea of taking her grandmother a special present. So she followed the wolf. Was that a good idea? Or bad idea? A it, bad idea. It was a bad idea, wasn't it? Because her mother said, don't stop. And if she does something different from her mother, it's going to be a bad idea. Not going to work out well. Here we are, he said. Now I must fly. I'm late for my lunch. And off he rushed. And who's he going to have for his lunch? Um, the grandma. Exactly. When Little Red Riding Hood reached her grandmother's house, she was a little bit surprised to see the front door was open. Is that you, my dear? croaked a faint voice. Do come in. But when Little Red Riding Hood crept up to her grandmother's bed, a very strange sight met her eyes. Who is it? The wolf. It is, isn't it? He's hiding, pretending to be Granny. He's wearing Granny's sleeping bonnet and Granny's clothes. Oh, Grandmother! She cried, what big eyes you have. All the better to see you, my dear. Oh, Grandmother, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you, my dear. Little Red Riding Hood went a little bit closer. Oh, Grandmother, what big teeth you've got. Hmm. All the better to eat you up with cried the wolf, and he gobbled her up in one big bite. <coughs> when Little Red Riding Hood did not, did not come home that afternoon, her parents were very worried. At long last, her father went to Grandmother's cottage to find her. How horrified he was when he found a fierce animal, the wolf, in Grandmother's bed. With one blow of his axe, he killed the wicked wolf. Then, Little Red Riding Hood's father carefully cut open the wolf's tummy. 
Out jumped the little girl. She felt very strange indeed. Where's grandmother? she asked. I'm here, cried a muffled voice from inside the wolf. Little Red Riding Hood and her father soon pulled the old lady out and tucked her up in bed. I feel a lot better now, said Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother as she tasted the good things the little girl had bought. Brought, not bought, brought. Little Red Riding Hood's mother was so glad her little girl was safe that she hadn't the heart to scold her. I know you won't stop to pick flowers next time, Little Red Riding Hood, she said, because I will give you some to take to Grandmother. The end. All right, are you all right now? You go to sleep. I'll tuck you in, shall I? Lie down, I'll tuck you in and make you nice and cosy. Lie down. There we are. All comfortable. I think it's a little bit late, isn't it? And you've had a lot of stories. You'll be asleep in a second. You look very tired. I'll sing you a song instead. What song do you want? Do you want... I wish you a Merry Christmas, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Or do you want a onward, Christ onward Christian soldiers marching off to war? With the wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring for you and your King. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. How's that? Mm. How about one more? Yes. Um, let's think. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus is asleep on his head. The cows in the meadow are lowing their down. Uh, I've forgotten the words to that one now, <laughs> sorry. Um... I've forgotten the words. Little cow, the cows in the meadow are lying inside the little Lord's head. But something like that. But I've forgotten the words. Oh well, never mind. I can't remember the rest of Away in a Manger. Good King Wenceslas last looked out on the feast of Stephen. There was snow all about. On the feast of Stephen. I can't remember the rest of the words. So many songs I don't know the words to anymore. We should play it. Um, anyway, I wish you a good night, Aidan. Sleep tight.